Hey Ruth, so today I'm going to be doing a day in the life, starting you off first thing in the morning. And there's some stuff that I want to talk about today, but I'll wait until after breakfast time to get back to this because this is probably the craziest time during our day. It's 8 o'clock. We've all been up since 7.30, but just got out of bed basically. So... <clears throat> So I'm getting the girls some cereal for breakfast. Lexi is content to play at her table right next to them. She'll like watch them eat basically and play a little bit by herself while I get at least one side emptied and then I'm able to give her a bottle and then I finish pumping. That's normally how the morning goes. And I'm hoping it goes like that this morning. And normally it's me breaking up fights, reminding them to sit down and eat and all that good stuff for about 45 minutes. So we're just gonna skip over this portion <laughs> and you guys will see me after my first morning pump because it's about to get chaotic. All right, so it is now almost 10 o'clock and I've been done pumping since basically a little after nine, but I spent some time with the girls and then I sat down, sat down to do this a couple times and I had to stop and I had to bring up fights and here we are like an hour later and this is exactly how my mornings go. The baby is right next to me playing so it's going to be kind of loud. The older girls are playing in their bedroom right now and I just wanted to take this time to kind of talk to you guys about something. I feel like we're on here and on Instagram and someone's here to steal the show! <gasps> Who is it? Who is that? You see yourself, don't you? I got you, I got you. Who is that? You know how stinking cute you are. Hold on. Okay, so what I was saying was, is that here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's basically the only place I feel comfortable being 100% genuine, especially now with everything going on. I feel like people are like very critical of each other right now, um, probably for a lot of different reasons, but I don't know, just honestly, in my own personal Facebook page or my own personal Instagram page, I don't share that much because I'm not comfortable with it which seems like backwards to how it should be but you have been like so supportive and understanding in a lot of different ways over the years that I feel comfortable enough to do that kind of stuff with so yeah that's why I'm okay with saying on here today that the past few days have been really rough and I actually meant to do this day in the life either Monday or Tuesday, it's now Wednesday, and I just couldn't. Honestly, I, I was, I wanted to film over the weekend, like more traditional sit down videos, and I was going to film a day in the life while Mark had an extra long weekend because of Easter, but there were just so many things going on that it didn't feel appropriate, and it didn't feel right. This happy little baby does not translate to nighttime. She naps well, She's in a pretty good mood generally during the day. She does obviously have her cranky times or, you know, she's a baby, you know, it can change. But generally she's in a really great mood. She's a very content baby. She doesn't need to be held all the time. She can play on her own. She's fine as long as she can basically putter all around the room and hang out with her sisters sometimes and does get attention from us. like. I don't know she's just very easy during the day and then it's like literally a 180 at night and I don't know what's going on or what's happening but it's been really really tough to figure it out because no one thing is consistent no one thing is the same you know I've been down this road so many times trying to figure out what it is if it's developmental if it's teething if it's temperature if it's inconsistencies if she needs an earlier bedtime if she needs to learn how to sell suit like so many different things i have been tr like down the road trying to fix and just when we think that we found one or two things that seem to help the next night will be completely different and it will not work the same way and what we had going for us will no longer work and we're right back to square one so it's been tough because it's literally night by night you don't know what you're gonna get 
there are on occasions where she sleeps just fine. She does still wake to feed, but that's because she does not eat enough breast milk during the day that she does have to wake up in the middle of the night. And I'm fine with that. I don't care about that. That's not the problem here. The problem is when she wakes up and for an hour or two at a time will not go back to sleep unless you're holding her or even sometimes when we're holding her, she's still crying. Like it just, I don't know. There's been nothing consistent about it. And I think even not knowing how the night's going to go, like I know generally it's not going to be a great time and I'm going to be up a lot, but it's not even like I can be like, okay, she wakes up during this window. I'll sleep from this time to this time. It'll be broken up, but whatever. It's like, no, it always alternates. One night it could be 30 minutes after she goes to sleep. The next it could be not until four o'clock in the morning. And other nights it's somewhere in between. You just never know when it's going to happen. And also I think we vastly underestimated just how much getting out a little bit can do. I can hear the arguing from their bedroom already. And, uh, you know, just going to the store with them or, you know, going out just to local places, whether it's a playground or a fruit farm or bigger trips, like going to the zoo and I don't know, just different stuff like that. I think you really underestimate just how much those things, those little things can break up your time and your days. Okay, I don't know how much of that I'm gonna keep in, but the girls were fighting over Barbie dolls and they both wanted Anna. And then when I figured something out, then they started fighting over who would be Elsa. So now they are playing again nicely in their room, but that happens about 14 million times a day now. And I did lay Lexi down because apparently she is in her sweet spot and it was correct. I did not think that she looked tired at all. And I personally wouldn't have laid her down for a nap, but I decided to trust the app and she's down for a nap. She seems pretty content. I'll get to that stuff all in a second. But yeah, basically that's how our nights go. Like no idea for how long we'll be up, how hard it will be. And then, like I said, I think the girls are just having a tough time with not being in school and being around each other 24 seven. Also the weather in Ohio has been erratic to say the least the week before Easter or the week of Easter, we had snow and a few days before the snow, it was 60 degrees outside where we were outside every single day. And then it turned into snow and then that turned into rain for like four or five days. And then now, right now, when I just checked how cold it was outside, it said it was 40 degrees. It was 30 degrees when we woke up, I had to turn the heaters on. It's just like inconsistent and it doesn't help if we're not able to go outside. At least when we go outside, we can be a little bit farther apart from each other. I just feel kind of alone in it. Like I don't have anybody to talk to about it. I'm not one of those people who will willingly talk about it to other people in depth and like really complain and let my feelings hang out and like have a good cry or anything. I, I don't know, I just, never been that kind of person and I, I don't know why and most of the time depending on who asks me I'll just say that everything's fine even when it's not and I don't know why I do that either I don't know maybe I just don't feel comfortable talking to everybody the way I would like to but I don't know I've just been reflecting a lot lately about how you know everybody wants to come over and help and do whatever when they're newborns but like I don't know about anybody else, but my newborns were easy. <laughs> he wanted to poop, eat, and sleep, and that's all they were concerned with. That was by far and away the easiest time with all the girls. And it's like, uh, like I need some of those text messages now that she's seven months old and she's not sleeping and my older girls are arguing and a little less just infatuated with the baby and everyone's just having a tired tough time <laughs> and it just got me thinking about I think that's the case for a lot of people you know that m most people are super eager for when baby's gonna come and when they're here right away but then slowly as the months go on those people just fade away and I think people assume that parents need less and less as their kids get older but honestly 
I've found I've needed other people more and more the older my kids have gotten, you know, that's just my own personal experience. I just feel like there's a lot of talk about how lonely the first however long postpartum can be and how big of a change it is. And it, it, it really is. And it can be, especially with all the physical things that your body's going through. But you still go through physical things at 7, 9, 12 months. 12 months postpartum it's still lonely when your kid is three years old and it's still you know like I think people have this end date as to like when it gets easier and less complicated in parenthood and it doesn't <laughs> it doesn't at all and especially in motherhood it just feels like I need to be a nutritionist a dietitian a teacher, uh, MD, like all these different things to be adequate. <laughs> See, there's even things that I want to say right now on camera that I just, I feel hesitant to say because being a mom, how you do it, what you do, everything about it, like people are so critical about it. It drives me nuts. This is like turning into a chit chat video. <laughs> It's been kind of lonely and challenging, so trying to get through it the best that I can. And I just, like I said, wanted to come on here and be honest because I'm sure there's some of you that are having a hard time. And I know you guys get it just like you got it yesterday over on Instagram because there were several of you who joined me for my five o'clock beverage and we just might have that again today. But also, I don't think you guys have seen my new glasses yet. I promise they look a little bit better than right now. But I'm super happy with them. I wanted clear for, clear frames for a while, but the like true clear does not look right on me. Not on my skin tone. My skin is obviously very fair, but it like warms. It's like a warm skin tone. So the clears just didn't look right on me. Even with makeup, I never loved them. But these Kate Spades, if you can see over here, it's like a very light hint of a blush, slightly peachy color. So it actually complements my skin pretty well. You can't tell it because the lighting in here is awful, but I'm very happy with them. I feel like these are just far more casual and fit me from day to day. And I can still wear my black ones if I want to because my prescription only changed to one eye and even with that it only changed like literally the tiniest amount to where they would have to change my prescription. So the app that we're using for Lexi is called Huckleberry. I had a few people recommend it to me on Instagram and right now we're just logging the data to get the analysis back so I don't have really anything to say about it other than the sweet spot thing does seem to be spot on um no pun intended until i said it but yeah basically after logging so much information it'll tell you the sweet spots for naps and it'll alert you and like i said this morning i didn't think she was ready for a nap she didn't look like it to me but i went and laid her down anyways and she's asleep so it's pretty spot on so that's the only thing that has been like alerting us right now like i said you have to answer a questionnaire input data as like as far as their sleeping goes and there's one other thing and then it'll give you an analysis back and that's what we're gonna do and i don't know i was looking at the outlet dream lab but some people were saying that it's more general advice like stuff you can pretty much look up online so i don't know but it also has a money back guarantee so if we spend a hundred dollars and she's not sleeping better we get the hundred dollars back so I feel like there's almost no harm in it, but at the same time, I don't know. So we are trying to do what we can, but the day is not complicated. If you guys wanted to see a mess, you should tune in from the hours of 8 o'clock until 7 a.m. Because that, my friends, is a show. So I'll just have the girls come out here and play quietly. They actually already cleaned up the living room. The stuff on the floor is Lexi's mess, but... Uh, we have been having them clean the living room on a regular basis to earn screen time. And they asked me this morning to watch Miles from Tomorrowland. And I told them yes, as long as they cleaned up, they did that. So I'm going to tell them that they come, can come out here and they can watch that. And I will probably do bottles while she's sleeping. 
and maybe the little bit of dishes. It just depends on how much she sleeps. Typically, whenever she naps, I do try to get work done on my computer because she's obsessed with my laptop. If I have it out, she needs to be over on top of me on it, eating it, anything and everything. So typically I would do that, but since this is my work today, I'll be trying to get some of the housework done that way maybe tonight I can start editing this. No promises. No promises whatsoever. I also plan on filming another day in the life in just a few days when Mark is off because you guys wanted to see what it was like when Mark is home and he is working a different schedule than usual. He's working more and he is still an essential worker and we're just trying to be as safe as we can with that. So yeah, hopefully this weekend there will be a day that feels right to film and I will get that day in the life to you guys as well. But let's just go get those older girls before they wake up their sister and everyone's in a bad mood. <laughs> Okay, I just stayed in their room because I want to talk to you guys about something and it was not happening in the kitchen and this is exactly why I did not film for two days because this just feels super overwhelming. I feel like this video is a mess. I feel like I'm a mess, the kids are a mess, like nobody's listening, so many arguments, I have to stop and start a million times, like it just feels chaotic and I feel like I don't even want to post this because it just feels like a freaking mess. But here I am and I'm trying anyways. I'm going to push through it to be honest because so you guys can see <laughs> that uh, I definitely don't have it all together. But uh, I wanted to share with you guys this chart that we use. I printed this off I think even before Lexi was born. It's just simple. I made this in Google Docs and I have a clothespin with each one of their names. And every day we start off in yellow and then if they make good choices they go up to green and blue, and if they make bad choices, we come down to orange and red, obviously, one at a time. And most of the time, going up to green and blue is like something they want to work towards in and of itself. And then with orange and red, they do get privileges taken away, whether it be TV, video games, like a toy that they're particularly attached to. I don't know, just whatever. So that's what we've been doing. It works pretty well, I would say, better than nothing. Definitely, um, but right now it seems to work a little better with Sophie than it does with Remy. Sophie really understands like going up to blue and what that means and she really understands what going down to red means. Whereas Remy is like still getting there. So we do that and I also found a free printable chore chart and I will show you guys that during Lexi's second nap because I also need to continue to work on it. So it's not mine. I found it off of Pinterest and I will leave the link for you guys. But I'll show you what that looks like and everything a little bit later. But I thought I would show those to you guys because we just had to have a conversation about the, um, I just, I have to say colors and they understand what I'm talking about. So I, if I say, you know, you guys, you know, your head towards orange, they understand what I'm talking about. But sometimes they do need reminding about where we are, where we're going, and they can go up the chart too. So, you know, if they're down on even red, as long as they're helpful and they can make changes in their behavior and their attitude and choices, they are able to go all the way up to blue and it's happened. So it takes some consistency because even myself, I have to remind myself to do this, but when I am consistent about it, and I don't slack on it, it does work really well. And like I said, 
This is nothing fancy. You just make a couple of boxes, you color them in, and then you just add text over them on Google Docs. I can link my Google Doc if you want to. I don't know if I kept it or not, but you know, you can even make more. The inspiration that I got this from was teachers on Pinterest. They had a lot more though, like I think almost the full color of the rainbow, and I was like, that's a little too much for me. So I kind of adjusted it to what I thought my kids would be able to handle. I used the wordage that I wanted uh, because obviously with teachers down here, it said something about like parents have to be notified and it's like, you know, obviously that doesn't apply here. So I switched it up a little bit, but I got the inspiration from some really great teachers. And honestly, that's where I pull a lot of my inspiration of doing stuff at home is teachers, whether it's on Pinterest or Instagram, so many of them have so many great ideas about how to help these little minds and they are far more qualified i feel like at most times than i am so i'm taking their lead on some stuff we did a good nap <laughs> okay so basically what you have to do is go on here it, it was tracking how long she was sleeping so I just hit stop save and then like the end of sleep, I don't like that it doesn't say yeah. that like she just woke up on her own. So that's what I put every time. Okay, thank you for kicking me. Woke up happy and content. Save. So, like here's a look at her sleeps. This is what we're doing right now. We're on day two. I think tomorrow afternoon we'll make a full 72 hours which is what they need and then i've already answered the questionnaire and then i'll just submit it we're definitely subscribing because mom needs sleep it is 12 o'clock so i think i'm gonna get the girls lunch they did have a snack like i showed you i was able to get bottles and dishes done so that was nice she took an hour and 45 minute nap which was good like i said the daytime not the problem but now that she's up, I'm going to go let her play while I get the big girls lunch. And I didn't show you, but for breakfast, I just had a cup of tea and a perfect bar, which is typically what I have, or just a cup of tea. It just kind of depends. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to feed them for lunch, but I know for myself, I'll have my chicken patty salad. Mm -hmm. Queen of healthiness, I know, but that's not what I'm about here. I'm about convenience, so... As Ron Swanson says, I know what I'm about, son. And I do need to pump it sometime. If I had to guess, I'd probably say that my first morning pump ended at like, probably like 10 after 9. So 10, 11, 12. I should be pumping right now. But I've been thinking about pushing it to every four hours. Just because I'm there. I'm seven months, going on eight months postpartum. So I just feel like it's time for me to spread them out a little bit more. Same thing happened with Remy. <laughs> to give myself a little bit more longevity, allow myself to do it for longer. I just feel like right now I'm pumping quite a bit and I'm content with that, but I'd also be even more content if I could pump less. Okay, so here is their lunches. It's one of the easiest lunches and probably one of their favorites that I make them. It's broccoli, tomatoes, ranch, marshmallows, and yogurt raisins, and then apples. I split a red apple and a green apple between them and something to try with your own kids I could not get them to eat vegetables at lunch for anything and I realized it's because I cook them nine times out of ten and they actually like their vegetables raw so just a little tip maybe that's a way to get your vegetables and your kids but for mine at least they do not like when I cook them they would rather just eat them like this so this is what they're having and I'll show you mine whenever I'm done with it all right so there's my lunch People on Instagram were asking how I do it. I literally just cut up lettuce. I use some leftover cheese from last night's dinner. I cook a chicken patty, put a little bit of hot sauce on it because they didn't have spicy ones this time. Throw some ranch on top, bing bada boom. Get your beverage of choice, lunch is served. Okay, so it's really dark in here. I don't know why my camera will not adjust very well. There we go. Okay, so it is now 10 before one and I'm sitting down to pump. Sophie is keeping Lexi entertained in her little table over there while I pump one side. By the time I get one side done, she'll be ready to eat, and then I'll be able to finish the other side, and Remy's still working on her lunch, but I'll show you guys their plates afterwards. So yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and get started with this pump session.
Okay, so it's now 1.40 and I spent 10 extra minutes, 5 minutes on each side pumping today just because I am coming off my period and this bump was the most significant drop that I've seen because of it. So I just wanted to help it a little bit even though I don't think today it was entirely necessary. Now we are just laying here playing and I have like a makeshift baby jail going because the older girls are coloring with their colored pencils and crayons Mommy, on the other side. Pants a rainbow. Jesse's pants are gonna be a rainbow. That sounds fun. It's gonna have so, green. no, ma'am, you can't have the camera. Uh, yellow, I know, red, but no. And and brown. Sounds good. So, the Huckleberry app says that it's about, I think, 45 minutes until her next nap. So, we are just going to play. She only sounds frustrated right now because I won't let her have the camera. She's over here trying to get to it. But, we don't have cameras or phones. It's okay. It's okay. It's the two things she's always interested in is my camera and the phones and as soon as we get them out of her way and she understands she's not getting them she throws a fit but you'll learn you'll learn just like sissies did so yeah we are just gonna play until it's nap time and i am gonna have to unload my memory card at some point get a new battery beautiful wow that looks really neat thanks mom look at this <gasps> beautiful Gorgeous. That unicorn has a castle all to itself. Uh huh. It's only hers. It's only hers. It's only for unicorns. Okay. Okay, so it's 2.30 now. I just laid Lexi down for her second nap of the day, hoping that this goes well. During the day, I've been trying to lay her down while she's a little bit more alert than what I was usually doing. And that way, hoping that she can slowly just put herself to sleep and maybe that'll help overnight. I don't really know. But for the first like five, 10 minutes, I try not to get involved in anything or start any kind of projects just to make sure that she is actually going to go to sleep. Here is the girls plates from lunch. I have them just leave them up here on the counter and Remy does not like the stems of her broccoli and I left a lot of stem on the broccoli this time when I cut it just because I'm also using that same broccoli to cook for Lexi and that way when I do use it for her it's easier for her to hold on to and eat because obviously she's a baby and she needs more but yeah that's how that's going and oh that's what I want to do I want to do the chore chart so yeah like I said right now I'll probably start just unloading my memory card and then once that's done I know she's asleep for sure I'll get started on that chore chart and show you guys okay it's almost four o'clock I finally got the clips moved over the girls and I are eating this right now as a snack, but I thought I would show you the chore chart now that I have room on my memory card. So this is what I downloaded. It is a PDF. I switched it to a PNG file just using a website, and then I uploaded it to my PicMonkey because PicMonkey, you cannot edit PDFs, so that's why I converted it to a PNG. And then from there, I was just able to edit it kind of like I can a picture. This is what I use to make 99% of my thumbnails. And so I edited how I want to, and then I saved it again as a PDF so I can print it out easily. This is what Sophie's looks like. My printer just personally does not print PNGs and PDFs the same way. It's so much more complicated when I try to print a image kind of file, 
but if it's a PDF, it has no problem. I don't know. That's just my printer. That's the reason why I did things the way I, that I did them. But so for Sophie's, I just added her name, a little something on the background to make it stand out. I mean, they know how to spell their names, but whatever. So the daily things, I kept it pretty simple. The be helpful, get dressed, brush hair, brush teeth, and pick up the living room. They needed to do that every single day of the week. And then for weekly, what I did is over in this column, it's run the vacuum. And I'm talking about our handheld vacuum and mainly wherever they snack at and also underneath their table that they eat at. And then to clean their bedroom and then to help fold laundry, organize the shelves that they put their toys on, and then to practice tying her shoes with shoelaces. And then over here, I did more like academic type things. So recite her name card. We have name cards for the girls that are just like the ones at school. It has their first and last name, their address, and the phone number in which they should need to call. And then geometric shapes. She needs to know that for kindergarten, the one that she's going to at least. And then to create a piece of art and then build blocks and practice her sight words. Most of that stuff gets done more than weekly. No, I'm talking about Sophie right now. Most of that stuff gets done more than weekly, more like every other day or so, but it doesn't matter. The bare minimum, I just put it under weekly. So that's what I did for Sophie. Haven't saved Remy's yet, but Remy's is the exact same up here on the daily. For the weekly, I changed it a little bit. Down here, I put practice zipping jacket. This stuff right here is just common stuff that they can both share responsibilities in, just like this stuff is. I would like to see her practice zipping up her own jacket. That's something she still needs to master. I think it's more patience than anything. And then over here, I adjusted her stuff, her academic stuff. So the ABCs, one, two, threes, getting, getting to know basically all our letters and a lot of numbers. And then to recite her name card, create a piece of art, build blocks, and then practice left versus right. Because that's still something she gets most of the time, but, you know, we can stand to use more practice. So that's what they look like, and I am going to print those out, laminate them. What were you saying, Sophie? I was saying, I was giving it up on this bubble, it's supposed to make bubble make I got from for Easter, from the Easter Bunny. Yeah, you guys like those, huh? Yeah, I just you guys watched that. my... Easter basket video. The little Fubbles, I think, is the brand name of it. And they're able to walk around with them and they're no spill and they just blow bubbles all day long. <laughs> so, like, there's a few things that were really a hit in the baskets, and that is probably number one is those bubbles. But yeah, I'm just going to print those out and put and them up on it. And you can catch the bubbles on, your, on the bubble wand. Yeah, that's what you do, huh? They'll blow bubbles and then they try to catch them again on the wand. That's Sophie's favorite thing to do. Yeah, I want to get a closer look and, and see my reflection in the bubbles. Yeah. I always try and make a blow a big bubble so I can float. Yeah. Yeah, I yes. want to float. I want to float. I want to float. <laughs> like when you have pixie dust on you and when you're a bird. When yeah. you're a butterfly. I'm going to fly. Fly to outer space. And what? See it. And when, AIA. Have, and when you have, what? <laughs> Nothing, I'm just, this conversation is just <laughs> going a mile a minute. So I'm going to hang those up with the other chart and uh -huh, I'm going to try and find video. the Google Doc for that other chart and leave all of this down in the description box in case you guys want to do this yourself. I'm going to print this out and probably just chill with them because they want to watch a show until Mark gets home here in probably about an hour so. I'll check back in with you guys here shortly. I'm gonna try and make this as quick as possible just because like I said, this part of our evening is so chaotic and hectic that if we are not on the ball, it just will get away from us. So it's 10 till six, Mark is home. He's out in the living room talking to the older girls about what they did today. And we've already talked and everything from him being home, but he did come home with the bad news that he's going to be losing hours starting next week. So that sucks a lot, um, obviously. Trying not to get too stressed out right now, but it's hard to hear those things, especially when he's like the majority provider in the house. It makes it difficult and stressful and, you know, 
I'm not really thinking like short term. That's not where my worries are. It's long term, you know, like two, three, four, five months from now, what this all means. And nobody has answers and that's even more difficult to sit with, but we're going to be just fine for right now. <laughs> and I hope that we keep being fine. And, uh, I hope my husband likes me going back to being a budget freak because that's going to happen. I'm trying to remind myself of the things that I know, which helps me when I deal with things when I'm anxious and I can't stop thinking about them. I get very obsessive about things and I can't stop thinking about them. So it helps if I remind myself of the things that I do know that are positive and things that I know for certain and I focus on those. So that's what I'm trying to do right now. And I have to pump. I typically wait to pump again until he's home because it just gets a little chaotic if I don't. And I think I'm going to be making waffles and breakfast sausage for dinner tonight. And this light actually shows you like the true color of my glasses. How they very much blend in with my face and my skin tone. So I love these. Let's go pump and make dinner. Now I'm just hearing it, like these phantom cries. <laughs> okay, so it's 10 o'clock now. And that went downhill fast. And I could kind of tell by the way things were going when I last checked in with you guys, I did end up pumping again. I don't even know what I made. I'm not even entirely sure that I finished pumping because Lexi was like already cranky and crabby and kind of losing it. And then I just wanted to stop that way. I could get dinner done and get everybody fed. And I could just tell from everyone's attitudes that, like, the quicker the better. So, even though waffles and sausage is a pretty fast dinner, uh, I just decided to go with something that takes literally a few minutes, which was ravioli for the girls and ramen for us. And later down and she ended up getting four she's been up four times since being laid down three hours ago it's only 10 o'clock <laughs> i don't know this is there's just like so much on my mind but there's a lot of things i don't want to say because this is what i'm talking about like i just feel like if i say anything it's just going to be criticized because other people have it worse and I understand that and that's why I don't say anything most of the time on my personal pages it's because I know other people have it worse and there's a lot worse things going on right now but everything just feels like a lot today you know being sleep deprived and her not wanting to sleep and her being up four times already the girls were very emotional going to bed tonight both of them were at different times and you juggle that on top of being told that, you know, a big part of our lives, our income is going to be affected. My income has already been affected by everything that's going on. And I haven't felt super overwhelmed since this started. I've been, I've like had my moments, but I've never had a day where I'm like, holy crap, like, this is just a lot and I feel like with everything going on I don't want to even say anything because people are so quick to be like other people have it worse keep your mouth shut like I think we can all agree that there's always somebody who has it worse but that doesn't make everyone's situations easier so I don't know what this video is or what it was supposed to be other than just to highlight that my life is a mess just like everyone else's <laughs> some days a lot of days as of recently I don't know like I have no idea what this is supposed to be I don't even know if I should post this because I feel like it's just gonna be a mess right here is exactly why I haven't filmed in two days is because this is how I felt and it's just 
felt like such a mess that it's like who wants to see this i don't know i'm just feeling super emotional and i think that's just because of the stress and being overtired from fractionated sleep like i'm getting two hours i'll be up for two hours i'll get two hours i'll be up for two and then like when you feel like this on top of it you feel it's like a vicious cycle like all of this makes you feel like crap but then you start to make yourself feel like crap because i know that i'm starting to get impatient with my kids and like i'm grouchy and i'm emotional and you know being like that then i feel bad that i'm like that towards my kids or my husband or whatever which in turn just makes you feel worse you know what i'm saying like there's this big old vicious mom guilt cycle and I think what I need to do is to <laughs> crack a game and jack and to eat a giant bowl of cereal and to like just watch a show and shut my brain off for the rest of the night because that's where I'm at. <laughs> I'm either going to do that or I'm just going to cry the whole time. So why not just enjoy the little bit of the evening that I'll be up. I really don't know how to end this video because, like I said, I don't know what this video was. I don't even know what to title this. Like, come have a mess with me. Our daily chaotic routine. <laughs> I'm not throwing shade, I'm just saying. I could only aspire to be some of the moms on here because... <laughs> I don't have cleaning routines, I don't have schedules, I don't have anything. I just can't be one-tenth put together as what some of the moms here on YouTube or even on Instagram are or what they pretend to be, whatever it might be, I don't know, but... <laughs> I'm really thinking about dialing it our daily chaotic routine. <laughs> Yeah, since I don't know how to end it, I'm just going to keep it at that. I hope you guys are staying healthy and safe and that you're doing the best with whatever you've got going on right now. And if you're feeling tired, exhausted, overwhelmed, all the things, just know that you're not alone. There's a lot of us who are feeling that way and, you know, we're all going through something and, you know, I just hope that people can find their little community to lean on and to make them feel better in this time because I think everybody deserves that but I'm gonna get that bowl of cereal or maybe just the game and jack and pump and go to sleep and hopefully when I do a day in life here in a few days when my husband's home it won't be filled with me on the verge of crying or losing my mind so yes let's hope in a couple days it gets better and yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and as always, thanks for watching.